Hello people! Today we're doing a set I'm calling Cactus Garden. I've done these on my own nails obviously. And we're ready to go. I have got medium coffin nails on here. We'll be starting with the base color on most of the nails with this Beetles yellow, kind of a bright yellow. Um, darn it, I forgot what I was just going to say. FYI, this is the second run through of this voiceover because the first one, all of a sudden, my program just crapped out on me and I was back on my home screen on my computer after I was like two thirds of the way done. I don't know what happened, but here we go again. Okay, the accent nail is going to be this kind of southwest green. And then I will be curing these in a second as soon as I get it smoothed out nicely. And now we're ready for the second coat. We're going to be doing ombre on all the yellow ones and I'm going to be starting at the top of the nail with this kind of pale terracotta color. And don't mind my cuticles, they are a disaster area. Uh, I had my nails off for two days before I put these back on or put these on with new ones. So during that time I managed to pick my cuticles a lot <laughs> which is one of the main reasons I always keep nails on because I can't do it when I have my nails on. So that is that. Um, I want, oh, what I forgot to tell you guys too, uh, this set took me about four and a half hours, uh, mainly because of the hand painting and embossing process. There's nothing difficult about the set. Um, it's just very time consuming. So I would say probably an intermediate level for these, just because of the hand painting, even though it's not like difficult hand painting. But we're just getting the two colors we're going to ombre on there. Capping the ends off. Now I did put, and you can kind of see shiny around my cuticle area, I did put on a layer of um, liquid latex that I, that I broke down and got. And I don't know if I just got a bad a bad one or what, but it did not, it just was super thin. It didn't go on very thickly. And it was a royal pain in the butt to get it off. Okay, I'm gonna use this wispy ombre brush and we're just gonna flick that back and forth and get a blend going in there. Um, back to the liquid latex I don't know what it was I just it would not peel off I ended up having to go in and wa you know get my hands wet and literally kind of just rub it off in some water where it's where it softened up again so it was way more trouble than it's worth for me so I won't be using it anymore I'm just gonna stick with uh, just cleaning off the stuff when I get it on my cuticle area uh, back to this ombre brush now. This is a this wispy one. I seem to do a lot better with the ombres uh, with these these bristles. The other ombre brushes I have are kind of a square, like blunt cut at the end, and then there's some hairs missing, so it kind of looks like a picket fence, sort of. But the brush itself is really stiff, so when you're flicking back and forth, it's taking off more polish than it's really blending. So. Um, I had a lot of problems with that one. Uh, this this one here came with a set of really cheap brushes that I got that had different brush shapes that I was playing around with. Uh, so this has been my go-to now for these kind of ombres. If I'm doing a vertical ombre, I will use the other one just because that those seem to be a lot easier to blend for me. 
because you don't have to flick them back and forth. You just have to paint over the line a few times. Uh, this one I have added in some more yellow because apparently I didn't have enough at the bottom. And we're just going to keep on a going. Blending, blending, blending. And this is only the first coat, so you don't need to be quite as uh, perfect with it. And the second coat going on to this one, on the green one. And once I get that smoothed out, we will cure these and then move on to coat the second coat. Well, I should say the second coat of the ombre. The rest of them, the, the green ones have had two coats now, so. And I'm going to cure those. Now we're moving on to the second coat of the ombre where we're going to need to uh, do a little bit better blending job than we did on the first coat. That one has got way too much on there. I know I like to leave a little bit more at the line where they're going to blend so I have a bit of polish there to blend with. But that one was a, a bit too much. <laughs> okay, now the yellow going on. Now I have sped up this next, you know, this second coat of the ombre. So it will go a bit faster. If only I could speed my hands up in real life to go that quickly and come out with a neat product at the end. That would have been awesome. Okay, now we're back to blending. Now, as I said, we got to do a little better job this time since this is the final coat. Now don't worry if it looks a little bit stripy on some bits because I'm going to be using a matte top which is going to make it look a lot better. Why I don't know but matte tops always make the, the ombres look a lot nicer and smoother in my opinion. And we're still blending. And blending, blending, blending. And I am wiping my brush off when I start to build up too much polish on there. Some of them I've edited out and some of them I haven't. <laughs> when you see my arm going across there, that's what I'm doing is wiping it off. Okay, we're going to cure those and we're moved on. This is the brand of stickers that I'm using for the cactus. And there they are. They're really cute cactuses. I really liked these. I got these from AliExpress and I know they still have them on there because I just saw them like within the last week or so when I was on there looking for something else. So if you want them, that's where you get them. Um, I, there was a little bit of an issue with, you, you see, uh, they have like the clear vinyl stuff that they're on, that they're printed on to did not cut all the way through to the backing paper on some of them so they were not as easy to get off of there normally you could pop them right up on one end but they just like I said they were not cut all the way through so some of these I really had to work at them to get them off and we're not putting these all the way down to the very bottom we're putting them kind of sort of in the middle now, I didn't want to leave them just floating in midair like that because I thought it looked weird, so that's why I decided to do the pot on the bottom. 
and we're going to do just a couple more and then I will do the rest off camera I think this one see this one doesn't want to be cut off of that backing paper or that you know you you could see what I mean whatever it is the vinyl stuff that's printed onto Now if you'll notice my thumb there, you can see how it kind of looks stripey. And you'll see after we top coat how, that's, how that all goes away. It will look much better. And I'm just going to do one more for the thumb and then we'll move on. I wanted this big uh, tall saguaro to be on the thumb since I have a lot of room on there. And nope, we don't like it there. We're going to move it. I didn't want to let go of my tweezers. <laughs> okay, now we'll do the rest off camera. And then we can move on. We're ready to do the, the dirt that goes inside of the pots. And I'm using this mud gel for that, fittingly. I'll be using a detailer brush. And this is where the time consuming process starts. The rest of that was fairly quick up till now. Now this is where it slows way down. Plus you get to watch me being awkward trying to paint on my own fingers and I can't get them uh, to be going in the direction I need them to be in. We're just going to do kind of like a oval-ish kind of shape around the around the bottom of there, bottom of the cactus. And like I said, this will be the dirt that's inside of the pot. Now I spent a lot of time trying to make this nice and smooth, nice smooth line around there. Uh, in hindsight, I didn't really need to be that smooth with it because when I put the, when I paint the pot on there, I could, I easily could fix, you know, anything that's not real smooth with, uh, with the green, with the pot color, which is going to be green. Now you'll notice at the top of this nail, there's a divot up there at the top. Well, you can't see it that right there, but you get it's in the right light, you can see it. Uh, my polish did not fully cure, which I didn't notice till later. I did stick it back in there and give it a longer cure, so it is cured all the way through, but the divot is still there, which in this case I wasn't that concerned with because there's going to be an embellishment right there anyway. But those are the kind of things that if they happen well you just put something there instead of stripping your whole nail down and starting over you put something over it you know stickers decals glitter uh, you could paint something over it then you won't notice as much And like I said, I did spend a lot of time getting these on here, which really wasn't as necessary. Now I'm going to clean that little bit up off the bottom with some alcohol. And moving on to this one, I believe this is the last one we're going to see. And then we'll move on. The rest I will do off camera. It wanted to keep focusing on my my hand with the paintbrush versus instead of the other one that I'm actually painting on so sorry it's a little blurry now after I get the these on here uh, we're going to be curing the dirt after that then it will be time for top coating now, I put a layer of, 
my tempered top coat which is a hard gel over these and then I put the matte coat which you're gonna see all that but I'm telling you because the following day after I did this set um, I was painting I've been working on painting some cabinets around here so I double gloved with vinyl gloves so I could keep the paint uh, off my nails and somehow my hands being all sweaty and getting all full of sweat in the gloves this is the tempered top right now um, caught it somehow got underneath the top coat and caused some of the stickers to bubble and start to come off which needless to say I was not happy about so I did have to go back in and spend about 45 minutes repairing so I don't know why I don't know how it got into there I don't know why that happened you know those are cured we're going over them now with the mat so in the future I will be using um, on any of these kind of 3d puffy kind of stickers I will be doing two coats of the tempered top and I thought I was really careful getting it all around the edges and so it would be all sealed in good but apparently I must have missed some spots um, but yeah I'll be doing two coats of the tempered top in the future before I do matte and hopefully that solves the problem I guess I will find out again uh, tomorrow uh, when I take a shower and we'll see if they're still they stay on okay those are cured we're moving on to painting the pots now I'm using the same green that I used for the accent nail I was gonna paint the pots all different colors but I decided I didn't want to bring a bunch of random colors into the set I wanted it to be more cohesive so I just went with this the green but we're going to start by just painting around the dirt part, the rim of the pot that goes around the dirt. And this is where if we had any problems with the dirt not being you know all nice and smooth this is where I could have fixed it instead of spending quite as much time as I did getting the dirt uh, smoothed off in the first place okay then this is the bottom part of the pot we're putting on now and then we just need to fill it in and once I'm happy with it we are going to be then embossing it with clear acrylic powder and I think we're I think we're good okay and I'm getting the powder out there it is <laughs> in case you didn't believe me there it is okay and we're just gonna oopsie we're just gonna gently that could have been a disaster we're just gonna gently pour this on it will soak into that wet polish and we're gonna keep adding more until we don't see any shiny bits and be careful you don't bump your jar or whatever you're putting it on with against that because it, you will ruin it and you may have to start over okay once we get that soaked in and I'm happy with it we'll move on to the next one okay I should be ready to move on and we are and we're just going to do the same thing on here as you can see this is the time consuming part 
anytime I have to do hand painting it takes me forever I'm sure you, there's some of you guys out there can knock that out real quick but I'm not one of them um, I tried to make the pots a little bit different on each one in some way they're not real apparent when you're just looking at the whole set together but after I did that pinky and it covered the whole bottom of my nail I started thinking well why did I do an ombre when you can't even see the bottom of it but uh, as I went along I, I buried them a little so Hey, we're just filling this guy in now. We're going to be doing a little bit of a design on this pot after I get the, before I cure it. We'll do that. I did do things to try to make them look a little different so they're not all exactly the same. And we need a little bit more on that side bit. I'm putting it on rather thick so that it will have more dimension once it's embossed. And these will be getting a full two minute cure to make sure it gets cured all the way through. Okay, and I think we're good with that one move on to the next one now if you do like I do where I I do like four fingers then cure then the other four fingers and cure then I do both my thumbs and cure them that works the best for me um, I don't do my whole hand at, and put it in at one time because the thumbs never seem to get cured properly they can't I can't get them in there far enough so that's why I do it that way and you may have a, lamp, a curing lamp that's bigger and you could fit your whole hand in there and it will cure properly then, but for me it doesn't work, so that is why we do it that way. I do have a method to my madness, and it may not be apparent to, to a lot of people, but there is a reason that I do things the way I do. Okay, we're going to fill this guy in and then we're going to be ready to move on. and acrylic going on now you don't have to use acrylic powder you can use embossing powder which comes in all different uh, colors and styles I have a white one that's got some iridescent fine fine glitter in it that I use uh, that I got at Michaels I use that around uh, the holidays in the winter for snowy stuff and look at that if you look at my knuckle there you can still see some white paint on there from when I was painting before um, you can also use really really ultra fine glitter for embossing okay now I'm going to put I just wanted to do like a little simple stripe design on here um, that one got too fat and we're gonna fix that in a minute and I will show you how I did that I just wanted some skinny little stripes and I was using uh, the other end of my cuticle pusher. Okay, now I've taken this little brush. This is a dry brush. There's nothing on it. And I'm just gently, gently patting that back over to make it so it's not so fat. And then I'm going to widen these other two a little bit. Then we're going to be ready to cure. Anytime. Oh, I was going to pat that down a little. Okay, now we're going to cure those two minutes, like I said before. Okay, now they have been cured. Now we're moving on to the second, the, the next layer for the pot. And this is just going to be the pot rim only. And hopefully <clears throat> this is going to give us the dimension that makes it look like the pot rim is sticking up, you know, sticking out farther from the actual pot. In hindsight, I, I you know go around here and do this one. We emboss and cure, but in hindsight, I should have gone around the rims again and a second time to give them a little bit more height. Because once they're cured, you can't totally you can't see the 
the difference that well. But this is where neatness counts. <laughs> because this will be the final bit on there. <clears throat> and once again, we go with the powder. Now, this nail, I forgot to brush them off before I started, so that one went on top of the unbrushed off nail. Now, I'm just going to take this dry brush again and kind of go along the bottom and smooth out any little bits that might be poking down, making it not look round like I wanted. Now, when you're doing this, if you cause any little bits to stick up like that one right there, if you don't pat that down and you cure it like that, and I did end up with some of those, I took one of my finishing files, which was a 240 grit, and I just very lightly went over that bit that was sticking up, and it took it right off. And now I'm brushing the other ones off like I should have done with, with the first in the first place with that, that last one. And we're going to do the same thing to these now. And here we go. And once again, I am putting it on kind of thick so we get that dimension. I think it could have benefited from another layer after this one, but I didn't do it. So <clears throat> you guys might want to do that if you do these. Also, I'm thinking, you know, I could have done these with the uh, carving gel and built the pots with those too. That's another option. That would have been uh, probably easier, maybe quicker. And we'll move on to this guy. After I get this one done, the rest of them I will do off camera so you don't have to sit through all of them. I really like these cactuses though, they were really cute. I actually had to order these twice and I've had these for months now but specifically waiting for it to be August where I could do them on my nails. I don't know what it is about August but in my mind August always says yellow to me. So we've got this set. The next set that I'm going to do next week has got a lot of yellow also. Then we will start to be moving into uh, well, I'll probably do maybe one more summary kind of thing, and then after that I'm going to be starting to move off into uh, the fall-ish colors. FYI, I'm doing a craft show right at the beginning of October, so you're going to see me doing Halloween nails a lot earlier probably than you, want, than you would like, and a lot earlier than I would like, but... I, mean, I kind of need to have them for the show. Okay, now we're going to cure those again. And there they are, all cured. And I've done the rest of them. Now we're moving on to the embellishments. I've got these kind of cat eye stones. I'm going to be using the yellow ones. I did not use the green ones. And then we have these. These are metal. Um, they're, they work, they're like little tiny rocks. They were gold finished with kind of not an AB but some kind of color thing then we've got these um, gold teardrop studs and then we had the the little uh, peachy colored beads with the gold rim around them I use one of some of those too okay I'm going in with the nail glue I'm just gonna do a swoosh on this one Sorry for my hand, but I tried to edit it out as much as I could. The 
stuff has to sit on the right side of me because right on the left side is where my, my curing lamp is so I don't like to leave it over there because inevitably as I'm working and I'm curing things I forget it's there and then the top of the glue gets cured and it's a mess. So I try to keep all that stuff over to the right, but then then I have to reach across when you guys see me doing stuff, which doesn't go well on camera, but it's the best I could do. I'm squeezed into a tiny area of my nail desk trying to do all this stuff. Okay, now we're gonna go in with some of the these little rock things. I call them rocks, I don't know. They're little metal, like, I'm guessing like droplets of whatever metal it is now this these ones have a gold finish that then has this like kind of color finish on top of the gold I don't want to say it's an a B finish because it's not exactly but I don't know what it is uh, I believe I got these off of alley but I've had these for a few years now <clears throat> I use them occasionally not that often we need a little more glue And then I decided I wanted a couple more to be on here, kind of around that uh, that cat eye. Well, that one you're looking at, the cat eye part is not showing up. The one on the one I used on my other hand has it really well. This one, I don't know what happened to it; it just wasn't there. But anyway, going and that is a yellow one, even though it looks kind of green because it's over the green nail. And one more over here. Okay, once I'm happy with this, I'm going to go ahead and cure that one before we move on to the others. Okay, I believe I've done that. And now we're moving on to this. Okay, that one where that glue is there to the right side of that nail. I put, uh, that's where that divot was, and we're going to use a couple of these uh, little gold teardrop, um, I'm calling them studs, I don't know what they're, what they really are, but, okay, and there's the divot covered up now. Now being that these are concave underneath, and we just went through this with something recently, I forget what it was now, I think it was on the mermaid set, but you want to get a lot of glue under there so that it squooshes out of the sides just a little so that the edges are definitely in glue. Otherwise they'll just pop off on you later on. Unless you have a whole ton of glue that goes all the way up and fills that whole concave part up. And I'm just going to put a few of these little stones on there. Now while we're on the subject of um, those uh, gold things, those teardrop gold ones, you're going to see me mat top these near the end of here. By the next day after I had washed my hands a few times, uh, the mat came off of all of those gold bits. So I so they are at the end of the picture. You're going to see them matted, and they look nice. I like them better matted, but they can't. I had to clean the rest of them off, and then I topped them with some of the hard gel, uh, the the gloss temper top, so that they have a coating on them, but they're not going to be mat. They're they're not matted now as I'm sitting here. They're they're shiny again, because I couldn't get the mat to stay on there. And I was not about to re-coat re those every other day. Okay, on the thumb, we've used one of those little peach uh, gold rim beads. And we're going to be putting on some of these guys. Originally, I was just going to have three of these, the one on each side and one going down the middle. But the, the cactus ended up being a lot taller than I anticipated. So that's why we now have four instead of three. At least on my thumb, you can see the the ombre nicely. <laughs> and 
and also on that particular pot I did uh, polka dots which is kind of nice when I did the designs on the pots because the yellow shows through from underneath so it kind of looks like they're painted with you know different colors or a different color I should say okay I'm just going to show you this one thumb and the rest of them I'll finish off camera <clears throat> took me a bit to uh, fussing around with this one to get them to be the way I wanted them. But once I'm happy I will cure that. I cure these, uh, anything with the uh, uh, gem glue I cure for 90 seconds. I don't think it needs that long totally but I like to over cure just to be safe. And this is a bad one where you could see my raggedy cuticles where I picked at it that those couple days where I had nothing on there. Okay, those have all cured and now I'm going to go along with the mat top along these edges and cover up any gluey mess that may be there. Uh, partly to just cover the glue up and secondly because being that this is matte we don't want shiny looking glue spots to be showing. It won't look nice like that. I'm trying not to get any of the mat on top of any of those stones or anything. Now on this one you're going to be watching me put the mat over top of those metal bits but as I said it didn't it didn't stay so although I liked the look of it better when it was matte I just don't know how to how to get it to stay on there and I did kind of feather this mat down into the bottom. I didn't go all the way down because you can't, you don't want to top coat over the embossed stuff because it won't look nice then. <clears throat> so I did try to feather this down so I don't end up having a hard edge of, of just matte, you know, top coat there. That one didn't need it. So now they're cured and there we are, all done. Yay. <laughs> and there is my cactus garden. I really like how this set came out. If you guys like it, please give me a like. I'd really appreciate it. And if you want to see more, you can go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I upload new videos with a new set every Saturday. Uh, we have a nice summer set coming up next time, which I'll be using some foils for. So you want to stay tuned for that. And thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Stay cool. I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.